So this is a video about kinematics. Uh, now you can look at the fancy definition here, uh, but really kinematics is just the study of motion. Talk you through this with a uh, cricket ball. And what I'm going to do is take this cricket ball, I'm sitting down at the moment, I'm going to throw it into the air and catch it again. So let's graph what that would look like. Here's our graph of that ball traveling through the air. Uh, now time is on our x-axis and displacement, that's the distance uh, that it's traveled from its, not starting point, but from a point, is on our y-axis. Uh, so it started at one meter above the ground. And then it peaked about 1.8 meters above the ground at 0.4 seconds. And then I caught it here, but if it had have kept falling, it would have fallen to the ground and it would have taken one second to go through that whole thing. And that is the displacement, it's distance from the ground at every single uh, point. Now, I have, a, I have an equation for that function. It says that displacement, so we use the letter x for displacement, which is kind of weird because x ends up being on the, on the y-axis. Displacement with respect to time is equal to 5t squared plus 4t plus 1, because t is on our x-axis. If you saw that little bit of movie magic, I had to replace x with t. All right, so displacement's on our y-axis, and we call it x. That's a bit strange. Uh, and time is on our y-axis. Now, if we find the derivative of that, we're finding the rate at which the displacement is changing. And the rate at which the displacement is changing is called velocity. Let's take a look. The velocity function of our ball traveling through the air. So you can see at time zero, at the moment that I threw the ball into the air, it had a velocity, velocity is our, is our y-axis in this case, of four meters per second. So that's measured in uh, meters per second. Okay, uh, and this was just measured in meters. Now, um, the moment you, you let go of the ball, the velocity of the ball starts slowing down. Uh, the ball starts slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing, slowing, slowing down, until it reaches its peak, at which point its velocity becomes negative. Now, what, what do we mean by a negative velocity? Well, it just means that it's returning back to where it came from. So a positive velocity is moving away from where you started. A negative velocity is moving back towards where you started. Now, if we continue on, at time one second, uh, when the thing would have hit the ground, so that corresponds with that bit there. At time one second, it had a velocity of negative six meters per second. That's how fast it was traveling if it had have hit the ground. When I actually caught it though, uh, at here, uh, it had a velocity of negative four. And you can see the velocity at which I let it go, four meters per second, is equal to the velocity at which I caught it. That's because it's a parabola here. Parabolas are symmetrical. Now, how do I get a velocity curve from a displacement curve? I just take the derivative. So we can say that um, the velocity with respect to time is equal to the derivative of displacement with respect to time. And now you just need to know how to find the derivative, negative 10t plus 4. All right, so I have a displacement function, I have a velocity function, I can go one step further and find the acceleration function. Down here is our uh, acceleration function. Now it looks a little bit weird because our x-axis is up here and the x-axis is still the time, time variable uh, and our y-axis is here and it's our acceleration. And um, our acceleration function is actually just a flat line. Now I've created this to have nice, even, neat numbers. And it says that our acceleration is negative 10. Uh, if you're a physics student, you'll know that a ball should have an acceleration of negative 9.8. And that's because of gravity. Um, but I'm imagining that the earth is slightly larger than it currently is, uh, which would mean that its acceleration wasn't 9.8, gravity would be stronger and an acceleration would be 10. Uh, okay, so or in this case, negative 10 because it's accelerating back down towards the earth. Um, okay, so how do I find an acceleration function? Well, it's just the derivative of velocity function. 
So uh, acceleration function equals the derivative of the velocity function, which is equal to the derivative of that is just negative 10. All right, so it's always accelerating at negative 10. It doesn't matter uh, what, the, what the time is, which is why there's no time variable there. Um, you really need to sort of get a good picture of that in your head because all of the questions you do really depend on your ability to understand that there is a displacement function. The derivative of the displacement function gives you your velocity function, which is measured in meters per second. And the derivative of the velocity function gives you the acceleration function, which is measured in meters per second per second, or just meters per second squared. You can write it, write it either way. Um, this video has gone on long enough. I'm not actually going to do a displacement ex velocity acceleration question in this video at all. This is an application of derivatives. You now need to take that knowledge that the velocity function is the derivative of the displacement function, the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function, and solve various problems.